Well, thank you, Paige, and hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar on infrastructure replacement plans for municipalities. While we are a, a large group, I'm sitting here in my office, and I feel like you're sitting in one of my guest chairs, so welcome. Um, it's great to have you uh, join me here today, and I uh, thank you for taking some of your time as we talk about the issue of reserve studies for municipalities. You'll see the uh, name change on the slide here, and that's the first point of our webinar today. We got our start as a company over 30 years ago preparing reserve studies for residential community associations. Think condos, townhomes, co-ops, plan developments. And it all started when I became president of my condominium association and the treasurer briefed me that we needed to deal with the problem of an old roof and deteriorated asphalt. And by the way, we had very little in savings set aside to fix or replace either of those assets. We needed a plan, a framework to know what to do, when, and why. And in other words, welcome to the board. And that's the reality of the world we live in. Everything deteriorates. Fortunately, almost all the deterioration around us is very predictable there was no good reason for our condo association to be caught unprepared. Those assets were deteriorating in plain sight over decades. For every facility, someone is responsible to look after the needs of the property, keeping an eye on the assets, making sure there's a viable plan to get to the future. At, a, at our condo association, when I became president, someone had been asleep at the wheel. There was no plan. And that's why association reserves came into being, to help those responsible for budgets and facility planning know what to do and to clearly articulate the why. So what we do is help our clients plan ahead. And why we do it is to help them avoid surprises and deferred maintenance and smooth out their cash flow. Well, um, after our start serving residential clients, we soon began fielding calls from city controllers and building engineers, possibly uh, people just like yourself, people responsible for managing the assets physically and financially at municipalities saying they were a board member at their condo and asking if we could do the same kind of thing, a reserve study for their city facilities. So helping municipalities has been a natural fit as long as we've been in business. But to many of you, um, this might be a new concept, and so we felt there was a good chance the term reserve study didn't mean anything to you. So we advertised the webinar using a more generic description, calling them infrastructure replacement plans. Preparing these reserve studies for municipality clients is now one of our fastest growing business segments, which is why we prepared this introductory class on the subject, helping those of you, and again, I'm visualizing you sitting right here in my office, um, those of you who are responsible for municipal, municipal facilities, helping you get more familiar with reserve studies and their benefits, what we can do for you to make your life easier. So perhaps you've heard of reserve studies or imagined such a thing as an infrastructure replacement plan or facility capital assessment. Well, by the end of today's webinar, you'll be clear on what a reserve study is and how it can help you. So, welcome to our webinar. Let me start with a few housekeeping comments before we get going. As a reminder, this is a live presentation and everyone's been muted to keep the background noise to a minimum. I wanna point out a few controls that appear on your screen. I like um, this to be interactive, so every once in a while I may ask for your feedback and the way to respond is to raise your hand by clicking on the hands raised icon in your control panel that looks like the one you see on screen. And if you came with a question, or if at any time you have a question that arose due to something I've said, well, by all means, just type it in the dialog box in your control panel. Again, similar to the one that you see on screen. Paige is gonna be monitoring that through our session today. And we'll select from those at the end during our Q&A time. Well, I hope you have some paper and are taking notes, but just to give you some peace of mind, I wanna let you know that the session today is being recorded and we will be uploaded to our website for future reference. And in addition, we'll create and send an outline to all attendees who fill out a survey at the end of today's session. And so that'll be a great reference to have on hand. So please take a moment to fill out that survey, uh, give us some comments, give us some ideas about what you'd like us to address in a future webinar, maybe a specific topic, um, a different direction to go, that kind of thing. That's how we uh, know what to do for our 
clients and prospects. So without further delay, let's give it a test. Grab your mouse and give me a hands raised click if you're ready for me to get going. Okay, I see hands going up all around the, or up and down the list, I should say. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to put hands down. There we go. All right, well, this webinar is designed for people with different types of facilities. It may be an old classic city hall building. It looks like the one you see on screen or it may be a newer, more modern architecture. This is a combined city hall and performing arts center. Uh, this is again a newer uh, renovated police city hall combination. Uh, just make sure that the city council goes in the right place. And uh, this is a library, a very publicly used facility. So different types of facilities, all the types of assets that you're responsible to maintain um, as part of your probably daily responsibilities. These then may be city hall, library, police station, fire station, water treatment plant, maintenance yard, uh, bus uh, storage facility, recreation facilities, um, uh, the list could go on and on. So this is the type of things that we're talking about here today. And it all starts when the building is brand sparkly new. So you don't wait until you're 10 or 20 years old or have old assets because deterioration starts beginning the day it's brand new. And I'll come back to this regularly. Everything deteriorates. And that deterioration creates anticipated future expenses and you can see the layout of expenses here over the years some years significant expenses and some years no expenses it's very irregular and that's a nature of the work that we do so you may be scratching your head wondering how the heck we're going to be able to plan and prepare for such an irregular set of expenses in our future and the key is that this deterioration is inevitable and here we go it's an ongoing cost of deterioration. Those expenses didn't just happen surprise all at once. They happened over the course of many, many years. They're very predictable and that makes them manageable. So it's not a situation where you just are concerned, you stick your head in the sand and you say, oh, woe is me. We've always had surprises. I'm even wringing my hands here. Um, we've always been reactive here. Um, you know, we just live in dread of what kind of expenses are we going to have next year as we just weathered this year's storm. How bad is it going to be next year? This is not a subject where you don't know what's ahead. And there's no reason for just sticking your head in the sand because the answers are out there. And there's also no reason to guess or no reason for wishful thinking. I hope next year is going to be better. And for those of you here in our webinar today, knowing the answers and being responsible for the budget is likely your job. You're not in the business of guessing and answering questions with, well, well, I hope or I wish because neither of those are very effective. Wishful thinking is not an effective plan. So you have a choice. You can be a victim of what have been in the past unexpected or unpredictable expenses or you can be in control because again these types of projects deteriorate on a very regular schedule but how do you gain control well um, number one you get a reserve state this identifies what existing facilities you have and helps you understand what you have that you're responsible for when are the expenses going to happen and how much money should we have and how much money should we be setting aside basically it's a question of enough how are we doing how can we pre be prepared and how can we make the future a little more secure okay I'm gonna come back to this the expenses are inevitable the assets are deteriorating and they're going to deteriorate further and that's going to happen whether or not you're prepared you're going to have an improved future if you're prepared so my encouragement is to 
address the facts and knock down those mountains, knock down those surprises, and make them a bit more manageable. Okay, first question, first question of the day. Are reserve contributions, are these set-asides, are they for the here and now, or are they for the future? Give me a hands raised if you, if uh, the reserve contributions are for the future. Hands raised if reserve contributions are for the future. Okay, I'm seeing hands go up across the room. Okay, that's typically the majority. Thank you very much. I'm going to put hands down. Um, I'm going to make the point and claim that the reserve contributions are for the here and now because, and this is important, the expenses may be in the future, but the contributions are for the daily, weekly, monthly deterioration that occurs over 5, 10, or 20 years. Those expenses are not surprises. They're not um, a stroke of lightning or a trash truck that runs into a building and all of a sudden you've got a big uh, expensive problem on your hands. These are very predictable expenses that occur over time. So the contributions, the reserve contributions, are as real as any other bill that you face at your city, okay? And this is what a component list might look like. I've significantly simplified it. Now, uh, this may fit for just one building, but you can multiply this. If it's multiple buildings, it'll be obviously very different. If it's a maintenance yard or a uh, landscape maintenance district or array of parks, anything like that, but uh, just go with me on this. This is the component list that created that uh, graph of future expenses. And you can see that these assets are all very reasonable. Asphalt ceiling, asphalt resurface, building repaint. Uh, and that deterioration occurs slowly and steadily every day. We identify the component, or you might want to say the project, the useful life cycle, the remaining useful life cycle, where it is in that deterioration. You can see that the HVA systems are scheduled with a zero remaining useful life, scheduled to be replaced this year for $4,600. And if you are in the business of being responsible for these assets, and if you're setting the funds aside on an ongoing basis, the future takes care of itself. The money is there when you need it. So. Do you have a plan and what is that plan? And how can you use that plan to create an improved future? And what does a improved future look like? What can I tempt you with? Well, an improved future for one um, will have fewer surprises. And those surprises are those unsettling times that and I'm not sure all of your roles here today in our webinar, you may be some facility managers, you may be some admin staff, you may be some controllers or uh, finance officers, but usually surprises are not fun. Usually surprises are unsettling when you grab for the roll aids and uh, you realize that my next few days, weeks or months may be very stressful. So planning ahead helps you avoid surprise and it helps you save money. And you save money, and this may be a little counterintuitive, but let me talk you through it. You save money by spending money on time. Specifically, you avoid the very expensive deferred maintenance because that involves scope creep where, for instance, a roof that starts to leak creates a lot of water, expensive water damage inside the building. If you would have replaced the roof on time, not only do you get to enjoy the luxury of uh, soliciting different proposals, competitive proposals, and getting a good price with a good um, service provider, you also avoid all the uh, water damage that would have happened if the roof was actually leaking. So you can save money. You also save money by avoiding multiple mobilizations because if you don't have enough money, then you end up doing patchwork or what we might call checkerboarding. And that is a very expensive way to fix something. Uh, I think you've all known about getting a car totaled. When the car gets totaled, it's all gone. But if you are replacing it piece by piece by piece by piece, it gets very expensive. And let me tell you a story. We had a, a gentleman call us from a, a major hotel chain and 
they had their marquee property that he wanted us to uh, submit a reserve state proposal for. And I was curious, I asked him one of our regular marketing questions, why did you call us today? And he said he was responsible for system-wide engineering. And still my um, curiosity was waiting. I wanted to hear well, why a reserve state, that sounds more like planning. And he said every one of the major departments in the hotel chain was chartered with boosting profits. And that caused him to really sit and think, how can he boost hotel chain profits? Because his job is to spend money. And he realized that the way you can boost profits is by spending less. And that means having fewer very expensive emergencies, fewer pipe breaks, fewer times that we have to close down a wing due to the boiler um, failing or things like that where we're unable to sell out rooms or we have to move people from one room to another, upgrade them, compensate them. And he realized he can help the hotel chain save a significant amount of money if he can do proactive repairs and replacements, not being surprised. So that's why he came to us. He wanted a list of what are my expenses, what are my projects, because I want to do them on time and not be dealing with so many emergencies. And then there's improved usage. Um, for the hotel, it was fewer disgruntled guests. For municipalities, it may be higher average condition reports. If you do such a thing, it may be more people enjoying the library, more people enjoying the public parks, or where you have concerts in the park or the play areas, just improved usage because it's an attractive place. It's been upgraded, it's been refreshed, it's current. Um, it is just an inviting area for people to enjoy. You can see their tax dollars at work. And for likely, for many of you here in our uh, webinar today, it stabilizes cash flow. It makes your life easier because it allows you to plan in advance. Now remember, these expenses will happen. It's all a matter of if they're going to catch you by surprise or if you can knock these mountains down and make them a little bit smaller. Uh, basically spreading out the costs over as many years as possible rather than city council or facilities coming to you and saying, okay, how are we going to fit in a $2.5 million street renovation project? And you say, I wasn't really planning on that. Um, and of course, that's headache time. So what is a reserve study? Well, it's an identification of the major predictable projects that you have and those projects are going to be those that fall into place according to a nice four-part rule or four-part test. But I'll get into that later. Uh, basically, it is a budgeting tool that identifies the expenses in your future year by year and allows you to prepare to responsibly prepare for them. What it's not is an expensive A&E infrastructure study where you have an uh, expensive um, A&E firm, architectural engineering firm, doing uh, building envelope study or a usage study. It's not an ADA safety evaluation. Um, any other type of safety, trip and fall, sidewalks. It's not a construction defect investigation and it's not specifically a repair or replace analysis. Although, and it's asterisk, because you may end up using it for that. Uh, we've had clients that want to know, what's this building going to cost us? And I think of a actually a local private school just not far from my office here that was trying to figure out um, if we renovate the campus in two years, expand the library and sports facility, we have to knock down this building, you know, wh what can we band-aid and what do we need to replace? Because they didn't want to replace anything that they were just going to bulldoze in two years. And we had another client that was a college and they had a specific dormitory that was causing them problems. Uh, one of the reasons for the problems was they had fireplaces in each dorm room. And I thought, geez Louise, uh, that's just asking for trouble, fireplaces in dorm rooms. But it wasn't just that. It was the building was leaking. The HVAC system wasn't well uh, sized to the building. They're having continual problems with the building and they wanted to know what were the, the major expenses coming downstream with this building because they were on the verge of pulling the trigger and uh, knocking it down and redesigning it. So we provided the set of expenses that were coming up and so they were able to make an informed repair and replace decision. 
Okay, what it looks like. <clears throat> Actually, uh, nowadays, most of what we do is just deliver it electronically. It's a PDF or maybe uh, online, but it's a document. It may be um, building by building or it may be uh, citywide. We've done some that were 30 or 50 different buildings. We've done some where the uh, city had a, a budget for each different facility or categorized into different things. They would perhaps lump city hall and the library together, police station and fire together. Um, it's all a matter of what's appropriate for you. You can define that, but it's a, a document that you get to choose which type because there's three types of reserve stays, and they're actually pretty intuitive. One is a full reserve study where you create it from scratch, and the other two are update products. And they're, as I suggested, pretty intuitive. An update with site visit that you might do three or five years downstream, and the update no site visit that's a very cost-effective annual update in between. And I just realized you see a logo at the top of the page prepared in accordance with National Reserve Site Standards. Uh, we've had National Reserve Site Standards since 1998, so that makes it 20 years. So whether you're hearing this from me or um, someone else that you might be interested in getting some professional assistance from, look for someone who's following National Reserve Site Standards. Uh, so after that little tangent, you see the three types. <clears throat> the full reserve site typically you only need to do once because it's there that we measure your asphalt, uh, evaluate the different components, and develop your component list for the library, the city hall, police station, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And after that, you can just update the pricing, the information, the life expectancies, and that may be based on a site inspection every few years, or with a no site visit. Again, it's a very inexpensive product uh, annually in the in between years. Okay, so there's three types to select from. Do you remember? Full, update with site visit, update no site visit. Okay, good. And then there's three results try to keep it pretty simple here. And those three results start with number one, the component list. The component list is what we call the foundation because it identifies the assets that you are responsible to maintain. It's pretty important to understand what the projects are, the component, the project description, the useful life, abbreviated UL, RUL is remaining useful life, and then the current replacement cost. These are those projects that are going to happen. They are not just possible, they're just not probable, they are inevitable. These are going to happen. And here's the four-part test that uh, we use in our industry to evaluate if it's appropriate for reserve funding. Uh, we identify if it's a common area of responsibility, so we don't want to be assets that someone has brought to work, um, perhaps rented equipment in your maintenance yard, uh, maybe a uh, concession if there's a little Starbucks in the uh, library uh, serving coffee. Uh, we want to make sure it's assets that the city is responsible to maintain. Then it needs to have a limited useful life, a predictable remaining useful life, so you know where it is on the deterioration scale, and then above a minimum cost, because you're always going to have little things that get done on an ongoing basis. The reserve stay is designed for the bigger projects that are by nature going to unsettle your budget. And that's the four-part test. And you might recall that those are pretty much the categories of the four things that are in your reserve component list. Description of the problem, useful life, remaining useful life, and above a minimum threshold cost. Then you get to the second result of a reserve stay, and that's an evaluation of reserve fund strength. It's uh, answering the question, how are we doing? Um, how's our cash compared to our needs at this time? And for most cities, they are underfunded. We hear about uh, the deteriorated status of our infrastructure in our country, and that's just the nature of what we have. So uh, we're going to be able to calculate that and show you where you are on the scale. So has your reserve, have your reserves kept pace with deterioration? It's, the deterioration is ongoing. As I said, it's 
not a surprise. It's very steady, slow and steady over the years. And the question is, have you kept pace? It's almost like that world record pace line that you see. How are we doing? Are we keeping up? And we measure it with a term called percent funded. So we're not primarily going to measure or report on how you're doing in terms of cash. Uh, it's not like a uh, 30,000 square foot library is going to need X in reserves. What we're looking at is how much do you need at this time? So it's going to be a balance between the deterioration, how much deterioration do you have, and how much cash do you have? You can imagine if that same 30,000 square foot library is brand new, it has very little deterioration, and you don't really need much cash set aside, but you hopefully are accumulating some cash through the years. So as that building gets old, you've got enough cash for the bathroom modernization, uh, renovation of the um, admin areas, modernization of the elevator, resurfacing the roof, painting the building, at new signage out front, all those different projects. You need to be accumulating over time. So as the assets deteriorate, hopefully your, excuse me, as your physical assets deteriorate, hopefully your financial assets also grow, keeping things in balance. And when they're in balance, then you are what we call 100% funded. And um, there are a number of facilities out there that are in this status, in the good status. What we want you to, to avoid is being in the poor range, the 0 to 30% funded range, because that's where a lot of bad things start to happen. Um, we have a term in the residential community association world called special assessment. That's where the owners get a, a very unpalatable letter from the board saying, hey, we need uh, $5,000 from each of you by uh, three months from now. And you say, oh darn, uh, that's going to change my world for the rest of this year. Uh, for a municipality, it may be a budget crisis. It may be uh, tipping you into deferred maintenance. And we see a significant instance of that when the municipality is in the 0 to 30% range. It means that there's going to be significant instances of deferred maintenance or cash flow crises, simply where you just don't have the cash. You need to draw it from other places or you need to start deferring it, kicking the can down the, the road. Now, something to note is how significantly reduced your cash flow risks are as you strengthen your reserve fund. You don't have to be 100% funded to, for your risk to go very, very low. You can get some pretty good bang for your buck even if you're only about 50% funded. Your risk goes way down, so keep that in mind. And the third part of a reserve study is the funding, the multi-year funding plan. And for many municipalities, they are starting from scratch. They may not have been contributing. Uh, so I do need to tell you the truth and that everything is expensive. And um, as you've heard me say many times, those expenses are inevitable. They're not going away. But the cash flow is easier if you can spread them out. If you can make that $100,000 elevator project that you know is going to happen in about five years, if you can start setting some money aside now, then it becomes a $20,000 a year project, and that's much more palatable. So do what you can. And remember, these expenses in the future uh, may look irregular, but the deterioration is ongoing. It's very steady, very stable. And stable is good. Stable is predictable. Stable is manageable. And you can control these expenses by funding them smoothly. So remember that just because these expenses are irregular doesn't mean that you are destined or doomed to have irregular financing for these. You can control them with ongoing, appropriately sized set-asides, and that can make your life a lot easier. And like I said, minimize expenses because you avoid scope creep, you avoid multiple mobilizations, increase utility, um, citizen enjoyment of all the assets. A lot of good things happen when you can stabilize the financial situation. And it all comes from making those transfers or having the courage to 
make the set-asides. Uh, not so much checks anymore, it's more of a uh, transfer obviously, but the more you can do to pay down some of those inevitable upcoming expenses, the better it's going to be. You're going to be able to chip away and make those problems smaller. Smaller problems are better problems. So remember that you're in a situation where you or the city owns it, you're responsible to maintain and replace it, that's your job. The deterioration is inevitable, but the cost of deterioration is very predictable. So you can get in front of it and help improve your future, the future of the city, and minimize costs. You can be a hero, uh, just means you may have to get away from your desk and be a little bit of a salesman to say, hey, I have a great idea how we can save perhaps some big bucks on this. And uh, speaking of that, there's many of you that don't have reserves being set aside on an ongoing basis. The city has a culture of just reacting, reacting, and reacting, and hoping that in some years the expenses will be down, and those hoping, remember that's a word that is not a real strong word, it's going to offset the years when expenses are high. Well, if you can start, um, this may be again the time for you to be a salesman and say that, hey, um, the reserve say says we need to be setting aside, let's say a million dollars a year. Uh, obviously, the city council is just going to laugh at me on that one, but maybe I can make 50,000 happen, or maybe I can make 100,000 happen. And I think you'll be uh, very pleased to see that that can be a, a wonderful tool because when you do get a surprise, all of a sudden you've got some money to make that surprise happen and to keep it from getting any bigger. Um, I shouldn't say make it happen, get the project done. And that way you avoid the expense, the extra expense of deferred maintenance. You start to get ahead of projects and that $50,000 that you set aside that you're now using may have just saved you. $50,000. It's really wonderful. Um, you perhaps got into this jam with decades of not planning ahead. We expect that it may take many years to get out of this jam. Uh, no surprise, but you can chip away and start making progress, get a little bit of budget going towards your set-asides, making your uh, projects a little more manageable and hopefully avoiding some extra costs. And that's our job. We've been up and down this path many times over the years, helping our clients see the future, helping them avoid the snakes in the grass, and uh, comfortably and confidently helping show you how to get yourself to an improved future. Well, we've been doing this for clients all across the country, helping our clients see and prepare for those inevitable expenses and leading them towards an improved future and that improve future, stabilize expenses, less surprises, lower costs, good things like that. So we can help. And I want to close with a, a short story here. Um, we had a client recently who was a large worship facility, and after 25 years they were refocusing their mission. And they boil it down to wanting to very effectively do three things. They want to serve their community by spreading the gospel, feeding the hungry, and sheltering the homeless. Very nice. And uh, they hired us as they were in this process of kind of rebranding their fresh mission. They wanted us uh, on the team as they were laying out their plans to implement that mission because over these 25 years they had accumulated significant facilities. They were what you might call a, um, a megachurch. And they wanted to know exactly what their financial obligations were to their existing facilities before they made too many big promises for what they could do for the community. So uh, what they wanted to do was find out from us, our value to them was just to identify their major expenses over the next 10 years. We're going to do obviously more than that. We um, There's more value to the reserve site, but their key interest was what are our expenses in the next 10 years. And that's how we were able to help them understand see the future and responsibly prepare for it. Not just be based on wishful thinking or crossing your fingers and dreading 
a phone call or email that might come in. So we would love to help you. So please uh, feel free to click on a request a proposal. If you go to reservesay.com, the request a proposal link is clearly on the right hand side of the page, or you could go to our arcapitalplans.com website and you can see we have a specific page here for our municipal clients, municipalities and commercial properties. Um, again, at the top of the page, request a proposal or sign up for our email list. I expect you're all on our email list because you're here today. Um, but you can learn much more about the work that we do for municipalities and commercial properties at arcapitalplans.com. So at this point in time, I'll turn the microphone over to Paige, who will coordinate our Q&A time together.